Ladies and gentlemen, the WNBA playoffs took until the final day of the regular season, but they are now set. The playoffs are set. And we have four very, very intriguing first round matchups lead into the semifinals and of course the WNBA finals in October, you know. It's going to be very intriguing because the first round is a best of three. First two games at the um, higher seeded team's home arena. And that's, you know, due to arena availability. And, you know, just, you know, again, this is, again, the WBA is still in that area where it's like you're not, you're big, you're bigger than what you were, but you're not. You're still not the first and second tenants, you know. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, and again, it's to cut down on travel costs. It's to, it, it's to do all this, and I get it. The first set of games are going up against the first game ones are going up against the NFL Sunday, but it should prove well now that all the broadcast windows have been put out for at least the first two games anyway. Game threes are obviously to be determined because, again, all of these series, you know, could end in sweeps. There is a potential for that. But we might get one, maybe two, I think. And I think the others will go three. And, again, it took a long, long battle for the Atlanta Dream to get where they needed to get. The Chicago Sky, of course, lost Angel Reese. There were some other, you know, factors. Jenny Carter was banged up a little bit. You know, had some issues. Whole team was just banged up. Injury prone. Washington. They started terribly. They ended the season winning what eight of the last twelve, and still didn't get the job done when they needed to. Unfortunately, and unfortunately, they had to have help tonight, and they could not get that help that they desperately needed in Atlanta losing to the very same New York, New York Liberty that they will be playing in the first round on Sunday. Now, of course, the Liberty rested a lot of their key starters, Brianna Stewart, uh, Sabrina Ionescu. I mean, it, 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 that, that pair right there is a deadly combination. And, you know, although, although Tina Charles is still wreaking havoc, for the dream, you know, there there is there is definitely something there. There's definitely something that you can say is just like, oh, you know, it, it's the dream, and they really haven't, you know, they really haven't been supremely competitive this year. But they did just enough to get to the postseason, and you know, with Ryan Howard being healthy, with Jordan Canada being healthy, you know, with Alicia Gray playing pretty good basketball. I mean, I mean, that there's something there. But, of course, you know, John Cole Jones is lurking. She is lurking. And there are other players like Feevish, you know, who's been, you know, playing some really good basketball lately for the New York Liberty. And again, this 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 is probably the series that is probably best suited for a sweep. Again, I just I don't think anybody thinks Atlanta is going to do anything in these playoffs. I just don't think so. So you know, be that do with that what you may. The two versus seven matchup. Oh boy, Nafisha Collier, you know, big fee. Courtney Williams, Caleb McBride, and Alana Smith, you know, a very interesting, you know, force right there going up against the Phoenix Liberty, a very inconsistent Brittany Griner, a aging, likely retiring Diana Taurasi, a Kalia Copper that, you know, hasn't really been playing too much lately, and she's been banged up, you know, lots of injuries. You know, at Phoenix has just been sluggish towards the end of the season. Of course, you know, a lot of the seeds were locked up like a month ago. You know, a lot of these seeds were basically locked up a month ago when we were just trying to figure out who the eighth seed was for the longest time. So Phoenix, you know, ending the season with a losing record, you know, 
ending the season on a streak where they just they just don't look right. They just don't look right. They're going to end the season, you know, and they're probably going to end, you know, with a either a 19 to 21 record or actually it's looking like they'll they will end with a losing record. They are down 71-49 right now. Of course, I'm recording this at about 10:30 at night. So by the time you see this, the Aces will have won their final game. And speaking of the Aces, we'll talk about them last. Probably the most intriguing matchup the first round. I think Phoenix is also probably going to get swept. You know, I just don't see this Phoenix team, you know, instilling any fight. And the way they've been playing lately, again, they are down right now. They will more than likely lose this game against the Seattle Storm. They are in the fourth quarter. They are going to lose this game. They are going to end the season with a losing record and downward momentum, and I think this team will get swept. They just have no drive, you know. Again, the you know, 75% of the WNBA teams making the playoffs is, you know, it, it's it's pretty bad. You know, it's pretty bad that 75% of the teams make the playoffs. But we do have a rectification for that we'll, we'll talk about in a moment. Uh, yeah, so Phoenix, I think, will get swept as well. And, again, the WNBA is also very top-heady, so just – Keep that in mind. The WNBA has always been very top heavy. You know, they had that step ladder format for a few years. In a way, it was kind of like a step ladder format, like you know how the West Coast Conference does theirs conference tournament. It's kind of it was kind of like that for a few years, and it still kind of ended up the same way, you know, for the most part. Yeah, there were some teams that were some outliers here and there, but for the most part, there were a lot of top seeds and and and, and you know maybe a five here and there over the last 10 or so years, but most of the time it's the top teams in the championship. That's just how it's been in basketball in general. Like, come on. Um, so yeah, this, this series is going to end two, I think as well. And then Connecticut, Indiana, of course, Caitlin Clark, Leah Boston, Kelsey Mitchell, you know, just a, a, a trio right there on their own, you know, um, and, and the Connecticut Sun, of course, A.T., Alyssa Thomas, Rihanna Jones, D.J. Carrington, and Dewana Bonner. A, a, a fearsome lineup for the Connecticut Sun, a fearsome lineup that could go all the way to the WNBA Finals. I think they will probably be unopposed on one side for the most part. You know, actually, no, never mind. Never mind. This this is an Indiana Fever team that is, you know, looking to improve. They already have improved off their last season total. The hype of Caitlin Clark has really ascended this, you know, Fever team to where they are. They propelled themselves to a six seed and a winning record, which is good, very good for them. And the Sun again, I think, I think this team is one of those teams, you know, again a very top heavy WNBA. And the pieces are there for them. They can't outlast some of these other teams, I think. Um, and then Las Vegas, Seattle is probably the most toss-up of, of these, you know, four first-round series. But I think people are going to go with, with the Aces, and rightfully so, with the presumptive MVP in Asia Wilson, you know, you know, with a with a healthy backcourt that is consistent, you know, of Kelsey Plum, Chelsea Gray, Jackie Young, you know, with those three right there, they can if they can be consistent enough, then I think things will be okay for them. But we're gonna get a clock. I think this one will be the series that goes three games in full. But the other three, um, I'm at least certain that the Dream and the Mercury will get swept. Indiana may take Connecticut three games. But this is the series I'm definitely thinking will go three. Um, you know, Drew Lloyd, you know, of course, has been playing lights out. Skylar Diggins Smith has been playing lights out. You know, you know, Neka Omagumake has been playing lights out. Ezzy Magbor has been playing lights out. You know, Seattle has been playing lights out basketball. And again, they're blowing out the Mercury to end the season. And, yeah, they tripped up a little bit along the way, and that's why they're the five seed. But ultimately, I think, you know, 
I, I think the Seattle team can hang with the Vegas Aces. I think this is the series that will go three games. This is the series that will push, you know, some things. And, you know, over the course of these WME finals, which will take only a month, it won't take two months, it will only take a month for the finals, I, I think we're going to have a truly entertaining WNBA Finals matchup. I think we're going to have one of the strongest, you know, matchups, I think. And I, and I think you all know what I'm going with. And I think, unfortunately, the semifinals will have to have, you know, either the Vegas Aces or the Seattle Storm taking on the New York Liberty. And I'm ultimately going with another, you know, with a strong team in New York taking on Connecticut. I know some people have Las Vegas coming back to the championship, but I think this is going to be our finals matchup right here. Uh, in, in a five-game series, I think New York and Vegas will go the distance. I think that will go the distance. And then obviously, again, top-heavy WMEA, like I've been saying. So Minnesota and Connecticut will also, I think that, that'll go at least four Um I'm not sure about the season series between those two teams, though. Don't quote me on that. And then our WMA champion, you know, for the first time, at both keep in mind both these teams could be will be searching for their first WMA championship. But I think the first time champion will be these New York Liberty. I think this team will take the cake for you know for the WNBA finals this year. I think that will ultimately settle things as far as my predictions go. I know these may be kind of cookie cutter, but again, top heavy WNBA. This is this is similar to the to similar to the NBA. I think things are very top heavy. So don't 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 question it. You know, don't don't question it. This is probably going to happen in some shape or form. We're probably going to get, you know, a one versus two or a two or a one versus three or even you know, a two versus four or three versus four. I just, you just don't see at least the bottom three, at least the bottom three in the playoffs. You know, you just, I just don't see it. I'm sorry. But moving on to the expansion team that has been announced, the Portland team. Portland had a team in the WNBA back in the early 2000s, the Fire, and they have returned under a new ownership group, of course. You know, and that is going to be very intriguing to watch because that Portland team will kick off in 2026. Of course, the um, Golden State team, the the Valkyries, have sold a lot of tickets, so like 17,000. Portland is hyped. The Moda Center is hyped. That's probably where they're going to go. Um, the, the the arena, formerly known as Oracle, is going to be hyped for the Valkyries and. 2025, which of course Toronto has been added as well, and the attendance continues to soar. In fact, there was an attendance record broken tonight for the Mystics Fever game. It was like 21,000 tonight. Um, of course, you know, the, the WNBA is going to roll up against three straight weeks of the NFL season, and I know a lot of people have been like, well, we got to move the WNBA off, you know, in, in NFL Sundays. It's just there's no win-win in that scenario. There's no win-win in that scenario. Let me tell you, um, you're asking, you're asking for death either way. You're gonna move it on a college football Saturday, you know? Yeah, there's events like UFC and WWE that can succeed on a college football Saturday because those that's WWE, UFC, AEW, stuff like that. Those those events can succeed against a college football Saturday. You know, or even an NFL Sunday late at night, you know, when when there's like one thing on at late at night. But you're asking four playoff games that have to kick off at different times or at a tip off at different times of the day. You're asking again, arena availability, travel costs. These are things that people bring up like every three to six months. People bring this stuff up and it's annoying. Um, it's similar to literally every other sport that I cover on this channel. Literally almost every other sport that is not the NFL, the NBA, or the NHL. It is literally similar to those sports. So, WBA fans, please, 
please, I'm begging you, please, I'm begging you. You are like the in, you are like the indoor arena footballs of the world. You are like the you are like the indoor soccer teams of this world. You are like the lacrosse teams of this world. Right now, you are still in that area. You have not completely taken off yet. And yeah, the viewership and the attendance has been soaring, but you know, some of that is like people just trying to take credit for you know Angel Reese, Caitlin Clark, and some of these other players that have gotten into the WBA this year. You know. You know, Ion's breaking viewership records, but again, they wanted women's sports in the first place, and they kind of and they kinda, and they kind of saw Caitlin Clark, and they 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 had that opportunity in their lap, and they and they were able to take advantage of that, like every single week, they were able to take advantage of that with their you know with with their coverage of the NWSL and the WNBA, they were able to take advantage of that each and every single week. So I mean. Can you blame Ion's business strategy of focusing on women's sports? And they want to highlight that, and they got what they wished for, and they got the ultimate thing on their silver platter, too. So they ate their, they got their cake and they ate it. You can't, you can't say that, you know. You can't just say that. You can't just say that, you know, that everything's so easy peasy, lemon squeezy, you know. But what I'm saying is, what I'm saying is, is that, you know. There's things that we're going to have to learn about, you know, trying to manipulate the schedule to where, and I get it, there are some days where we could, you know, have, there's been some Mondays here and there where there are no games at all. There's been some games where teams go back to back, you know, the season is already compressed as it is, you know, it, it was due to the Olympics this year that it was compressed as it was, you know, in a way, but I think at the end of the day, we're going to have to have a conversation of having a WNBA schedule where we can see a game or two every night. We're going to have 15 teams very, very soon. We're going to have 13 next year. We're going to have 15 in two years. So, and we're looking for a 16th. We're looking for a 16th team. So, yeah. Business will be booming. So I think maximizing the windows that we have, again, there are open nights that can be used that the mouse will not use. The mouse is not going to use a Saturday night all the time. You know, they should they should be using Saturday night to, you know, broadcast a, a, a WNBA game on ABC. They did it for the All-Star game. They can do it. They can do it. They just choose not to. There are, you know, there's spots on CBS. There's spots on big CBS. You know, there's spots on big CBS, but yet they'll choose to air like a golf special, like two hours of golf specials. They'll, they'll, they'll choose to air two hours of golf specials before putting on a golf game. And it's like, why? Why would you do that? Like, just you can just go to the golf. You don't need no pre-game game show nonsense. Put on something before that. Like, you did it with soccer. You've done it with soccer. Why not do it for the WPA? Just put on a game before, you know. You already agreed to a larger contract of games. Why not put more on there? You can do that. You can do that, can't you? So, you know, and I get people want, well, the WPA needs to demand these times. I'm afraid that's not how this works. Y'all know, y'all know it doesn't work this way, like. Y'all, y'all, like majority of you know WBA fans that have known the game for years know that it does not work this way. It just doesn't. You know, even somebody that was casually following and not really getting into the sport this year, like myself, knew this, knew this fact. And again, we need to really think about that. We really need to think about that before we even go into anything else. So, um, at this point. Uh, yeah, so the Mercury will end with a losing record. They will be 19 and 21. Um, the Aces are going to take down the Wings, of course, my Dallas Wings. Of course, they'll be moving into a new arena in a couple of years, too. Thankfully, so I can finally go see a uh, Wings game. I will finally go see a Wings game in two years. You know, in, in like one or two years, I think that's whenever uh, the K. Bailey Hutchinson Center gets, you know, fully refurbished and whatnot. Um, but yeah, 
that'll do it for me. Um, I know I was going to put this out on like Saturday or whatever, but I was like, might as well do it now. That NFL game tonight was booty cheeks. It was boo-boo. So what do y'all think of my predictions? Um, I, I know uh, I'm, I'm going to put up polls on all four playoff series real quick, and we're going to, you know, see what y'all say about these WNBA playoffs. So please, if you're a WNBA fan, please watch this video. I, I want you to. I need you to. You're going to. You know, some of y'all have been watching, so I need y'all to start subscribing. So I will see you all, you know, at the conclusion of the WNBA Finals, whenever that will be. It will either be October 16th, October 18th, or October 20th. If it's a sweep, it'll be the 16th. It'll be that same Thursday night. If it's not, or I think that's a Wednesday, actually. That's a Wednesday night. So don't quote me on that. That's that's. If there's a sweep, it'll be Wednesday night, maybe Thursday. If it goes to four, Friday, maybe Saturday. And if it goes to five, it'll definitely be Sunday night, right after the football game on Sunday night. So until that time, we'll talk about the NBA too, you know, during that point too, to really kind of kick us off there. And yeah, I'm out. Good night. Have a good weekend because it's going to be a good weekend. I can guarantee you that. You know, enjoy the playoff basketball that is coming to your screens on Sunday. It's going to be good. All of it.